he is the fella that does what's called in television the warm-up. He comes out and entertains the studio audience before the show, and he's very good at making everybody relax and get real loose before we, you know, go on the air and everybody gets tense. And he's worked regularly in the glittering clubs of Las Vegas and Reno ever since. And now this will be his network television debut, his first national television appearance. Now, you people in the audience, I should tell you ahead of time, straighten up, take a deep breath, pat down your hair, straighten your tie, because you may become a little part of this. It is his usual thing to run out and play with the audience. <laughs> Prepare. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Cork Proctor. I'm here to have fun, folks, and that's what it's all about. So I will be talking to you indiscriminately, periodically, when you're not paying attention, such as you're not. Good evening. How are you? Look at that flower. Didn't I see you at the Grateful Dead concert last night? <laughs> you certainly are. Hello, Mele Kaliki Maka. Are you Hawaiian? No. No? Samoan? Panama. From where? Panama. Panama. Oh, they're the worst kind of Hawaiians. <laughs> How are you, man? Good. You married, lady? No? Want to go half on a baby? <laughs> see why you're not married, you have a bad attitude. Cork Proctor tailors his performance to your group. Good evening, how are you? Hello, beautiful girls, hi. What's your name? Kristen, God, you're beautiful, Kristen. That's your wife? Steve, you are on some kind of heavy medication. If you could gratify that woman, Steve, there would be another star in the east and two more camels on the lawn of the Sahara. You better send your prostate out and have it cleaned. <laughs> but not right now. <laughs> Keep taking pictures. Ladies and gentlemen, we would like to present our uh, illustrious mayor, most of whom you know. And if you don't, you didn't read the papers over the last 30 years. I think he's a great asset to the town. We've had guys like Oren Gregson who walked out and said, I'm good, uh, I'm good, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> And, and then we had Jan Jones that looked like she just had some surgery and she wasn't sure what they'd done with her cheeks. So I watched them all, folks, and they come and they go. And this guy's a keeper, so please get together with a nice round of applause. Mayor Oscar Goodman. Get up here. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen. And notice, no bodyguards. That's confidence. How do you do, Mayor? Thank you, Oscar. I'm going to set this over here. By the way, how's your driving habits? <laughs> I'm going to talk to Ed Bernstein, because when two Jews go to court together, it's a killer. <laughs> You'll win. It's not an ethnic slur, folks. We know the mayor. Why do you think he took the job? You think he was going to be bulletproof? Does he look like Michael Mack? This guy's not afraid of publicity. Boy, that was a good line, and nobody got it. OK. <laughs> No wonder former U.S. Speaker of the House Tip O'Neill dubbed him Roast Master General of the United States. Did you ever notice, folks, truthfully, the people in California are all uh, oriented around the Latino-Hispanic names of the towns, Santa Barbara, San Jacinto, towns such as that, because California basically, and I am a native, was settled by Father Junipero Serra, a priest who came there many, many years, way before condos and freeways and stuff. Excuse me. I'm okay now. <laughs> For those of you younger people, you understand what that means. And the old people are saying, I wish I'd have done that before I got where I am. <laughs> so many people are confused. And what I find really interesting about California overall, the state is that when people come here, Mississippi, Georgia, Louisiana, some of those states where you can get pregnant at 14 but can't drive till 16. <laughs> a wonderful statement on America's moral code, isn't it? I'm your president. I'm going to stop that when I get in. Sure, Bill. <laughs> so many of the people come to, to uh, California, and they don't really understand the pronunciation. So you hear two old guys standing there saying, hey, you ever seen them sea lions down La Jolla? <laughs> and the guy said, no, by God, we're going to get us a motorhome, go down there, watch him swallows, come back to San Juan Capistrano. <laughs> yes, I am good, folks. Paid me a lot of money for this crap, let me tell you. All right, here's a trivia quiz for you, since some of you are still finishing up. What do you call a man who speaks three languages? I guess I picked the wrong crowd. <laughs> Trilingual, folks, would be a step in the right direction. What is this, a literacy test in Arkansas? 
Come on, it's your joint. Come up with something. They just sit there and look silly. See, when they get too much money, they just sit there and go, I don't care, I'm the owner. <laughs> Have another Xanax, Bill. You're right. He's not even here. He's in Hawaii going, wow, this is bowing. <laughs> A man who speaks three languages is trilingual. What is a man who speaks two languages? Thank you. Who is a man who speaks one language? An American! For nine years, Cork Proctor entertained cruise audiences. I'm staying in an inside cabin. I won't tell you which deck. Some people next to me, and it was funny, man. It's, here it is at 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm watching a Steven Seagal movie the other night. And from the cabin next door, through the wall, I can hear, ah, 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 ooh, ah, ooh, ah. I got up the next morning, it was an old couple with asthma. What the hell is going on in that cabin? Pork Proctors appeared at major hotels and casinos across America. He's entertained corporate meetings and special events. Here's what they say about Cork Proctor. Your quick wit makes the entire program fun. He skips in verbal zooms and glissades which miraculously fit his punchlines. The fastest, funniest, comedic mind in mouth and town. It's all attitude, folks. Reader's Digest was right. Laughter is the best medicine. Is there anybody here that would dissent with that? You keep laughing like Bernie Allen, God bless him, 86 years old. You keep laughing, you're going to be fine. <laughs> Here's a toast, ladies and gentlemen. May the wind at your back Always be your own. <laughs> your event deserves five-star entertainment. So this guy's driving a fire engine red Porsche, $100,000 car with an AM, FM, blow-punked radio, a Tiptronic transmission, and he's talking on his Centel cellular, doing 130 miles an hour, going to meet somebody at Summerlin. And as he rounds the corner, He's going way too fast. He loses control of this very expensive car with a spoiler on the back. The car flips over, does about three donuts, sitting there, <clears throat> oil running out of it. The guy's hanging suspended upside down in a seat belt. A cop sees this horrendous accident. He runs over to him. He said, my God, how are you doing, man? He said, I've sent for the paramedics. How are you? The guy said, my Porsche. I can't believe it. I ruined my $100,000 Porsche. I wrecked my car. The cop said, man, that ain't the half of it. Your left arm is missing from the elbow down. The guy went, Jesus, my Rolex. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. Drive safely. Keep an eye out while you're driving because Oscar Goodman has a car. To engage Cork Proctor for your next convention, roast, or special event, call toll-free 1-800-4-PROCTOR. That's 1-800-477-6286. In Las Vegas, call 361-5454. Or write to Cork Proctor at 7380 Southeastern, number 124-216, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89123. Yep, who did it? 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 Who